name is Najee Grant. I'm a 15 time children's author, humanitarian, and philanthropist. And a lot of people always ask me, you know, how and when did I get started in my career? And instead of answering a quick, should be a quick and easy answer, I always get to tell them a story because that's what I do. I'm a storyteller. So I guess that's what I wanted to do with you guys today. I always start with the answer of uh, it started in high school. Uh, I was not a very good student in high school, coming from Lauren Marion High School, uh, starting in ninth grade. I failed my ninth grade year uh, by almost uh, failing all but three classes. And uh, that's very important because in the overall work that I do, because uh, if it wasn't for that moment, particular moment in my life between ninth and 11th grade, uh, none of the things that I do today would be possible. Um, and, it's really, and it's become uh, a relatable story to the kids that I uh, teach through my author visits and workshops and our online platform that uh, no matter uh, what you're going through in, in, the, in the moment, you can always overcome them, those challenges, uh, as long as you have uh, foresight and vision that you're gonna get through it. And for me, uh, in ninth grade, um, you know, I was a student that uh, was never really motivated. Um, I was always in the hallways, I was never doing my, my homework on time, right? I was uh, always, my mind was always somewhere else. Uh, they're not particularly in, in the books um, and in class. And it cost me because, uh, you know, at the end of the year, I got a letter in the mail stating that I wasn't going to uh, go into 10th grade and I had to redo 9th grade all over again. And uh, by the grace of God from a teacher or an administrator, I should say, that gave me a second chance when all the other administrators did not give me a second chance and encouraged me to repeat the grade again. Um, There's one in particular that gave me a second chance and uh, she said to me, as long as you can do, retake all of your classes in the uh, next year, that we can, you can remain and do well, right, with a B plus in all your classes, you can remain in 10th grade when if you fail any of your classes, you will have to remain in ninth grade for the rest of the year. And so I took that, uh, I took up on her offer and that moment where I had to actually focus more so than I ever had to do in my life uh, was really a determining point in my, in my life. And it really forced me to focus, focus on what I, what I wanted uh, in, the, in the moment of just focusing on my grades, but also had me think about what I wanted to do once I graduated high school as well. And, you know, I had to do everything by myself. Um, she just gave me the second chance, but it was really on me to focus on, on my grades and improve to not only her, but myself, that I could do the work and, uh, and graduate on time. And I did it. Um, I passed all my classes that year. So, uh, I could remain in the 10th grade and I ended up doing fairly well 11th and uh, 10th, 11th and 12th grade but because I failed all those classes in 9th grade I had to play catch up 10th, 11th and 12th grade so I didn't have a lot of uh, free time like some 11th and 12th graders have. Um, I didn't have that so even up to my last class in uh, my senior year, um, I was my, my classes and my schedule were, were pretty booked, and it didn't leave a lot of time for uh, you know time with friends and, and doing other things, sports or anything. I had to cut all that out, except for my you know like your your main group of main group group of friends. But outside of that, I had to strictly focus on my schoolwork because I couldn't fail another class, uh, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, or I wasn't gonna be able to graduate on time. Uh, with my class because all the classes that I didn't fail pass in ninth grade and uh, the, the story is also even more important because that class that I had to take in 12th grade that I uh, had to take in order to graduate was a class for creative writing and short stories and at first I took it just because I needed the half credit to graduate but that half credit ended up being uh, my career 
I ended up enjoying the class so much um, because it was something different than the traditional class that you're taking, you know, history, math, science, etc., which are fine, but when I got to just be creative in this class and come with my own, my own uh, stories, my own characters, and just really be creative with my imagination, uh, I, I think I, I saw something uh, in this class. I said, you know, what if I really focus on this, what can come of this once I graduate? And uh, so the class in, in short stories, and also my teacher, teacher is very encouraging as well um, during that class as well. And I, I passed that class. I passed, uh, or I graduated from Law Marion. And still, just like everyone else, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I just knew that I was, I graduated and I had to get a job and be out there in the world. And also, because my classes, um, excuse me, because of my grades were okay, but they weren't, you know, great, um, I, didn't, could, I didn't have a lot of, a lot of uh, choices for colleges either. So I ended up going to doing part-time studies at Villanova. Uh, and also I went to Montgomery County Community College for a year as well after high school. And, you know, just working part-time um, at a car dealership, you know, doing ballet and doing some service, you know, also when I moved up to a service, service writer. But nothing that I was, it, all those things were fine, but I always had this, this thing for the short, the short stories that I was writing, uh, you know, like right after high school. So. My right, a year after high school, I just I, it was also the year that um, someone who, who changed my life, Barack Obama, ran for president. And when those two things met, my short stories and him running for president collided, everything changed for me. Um, you know, I I had ideas, I had ideas for my stories, but I never really thought about doing anything with them. Until I read up on and seen Barack Obama running for president in 2008, 2007, 2008, I went to the library. I bought all of, I rented all of his books, all of his, bi his biographies, and I got engulfed in his life story and his message. And I said to myself, if he can do everything that he's accomplished throughout his life, then I can do the same. And. Uh, with a conversation with my mom, I wrote down a five-year plan uh, for my life, and I'm, gonna, I'm going to strictly focus on what's on this piece of paper and nothing else. And we'll see what comes of my life once all these things are are complete or checked off, whether I, whether I accomplish them or not. But I'm going to at least put my foot forward and and try them. And the things that I wrote down on that list was I wanted to be a business owner. I wanted to be a nonprofit leader. I wanted to be a radio host and I wanted to have my own TV show. Those are the things that I wrote down on that first list and once I wrote those things down and I seen them on paper, my life changed because there was actually a plan and there was a vision instead of just going day by day not knowing what you want to do with your life and I was having, I was, I was happy that that I figured this out early compared to later on in life and even if it's later that's fine it's whenever you, you find it but for me it was at, at 19 going on 20 and I just dug down and said to myself no matter what where job I'm at it's temporary right when I was at the car dealership whether I was I started a uh, delivering pizzas, I was working at a gym, you know, for a 24 hour gym, working overnight. No matter what job I was at, it was always temporary because I was using the, the job to fund my vision and my dream of writing children's books and, all, and everything else that was on that list. And, you know, when we came down to, after I wrote down that list, um, I started doubling down on writing my children's stories, you know, and I started finding illustrators. I started finding editors, right? And I started just doubling down on it every single day and focusing on my craft. And for everything else that was on that list was, uh, I want to say challenging, but it was different, right? So, but it, so it challenged me to think outside the box 
and do different things other than just the nine to five that I was, that I was doing. So one of the things that I wrote down was I wanted to be a radio host. And I had to think to myself, where am I gonna apply to be a radio host when I don't have a background in communication, I've never done it before. And, but when I wrote those things down, it seemed like the universe just started moving its way and find, I started finding opportunities that probably I wouldn't have found if I didn't just double down and focus on the things that I wrote down on that piece of paper. And lo and behold, uh, I, got, I, I saw an opportunity for uh, people in the community to be a radio host for a uh, radio, radio uh, program in Philadelphia, WWUR 900, 900 WURD, and it was a contest. And I put in um, a two minute uh, audio clip and I put in to, for the contest. And about a week later, a week or two later, I heard back that I was accepted and was going to go on the show to uh, showcase my topic, which was on education at the time. And uh, if I won, I was gonna be the next host on, uh, on the radio program. And I studied, studied, studied. I went over and over and over my script that I wrote. And every night for you know a week or so until uh, the date of the, the program. And on my way to the program, I got lost going to the studio and I ended up getting there like two minutes before my time was due. I, I share this because the, the, there's these small moments, right, that, that help shape who you are and, and why you're doing what you're doing, um, to me are very, very important. So I ended up getting there two minutes, like well, a couple minutes before it started, I get there and I'm, I'm, I'm sweating and I'm, I'm like, I feel like I'm not ready because I'm, I'm upset I'm, I'm, I'm upset that I was late. I ended up uh, sitting in the seat and the producer is telling, telling me, okay, you're gonna start in a couple minutes, puts the radio, you know, puts the, you know, the, uh, the uh, microphone on me, things of that nature. And as soon as we start the show and the producer goes five, four, three, two, one. I froze. Which anyone in media or in radio knows, right? There's one thing that you can't do is have dead air. <laughs> Just like on TV, having white noise. And I ended up freezing and I didn't say anything for the whole first segment. I couldn't open, I couldn't say one word. And so they, they run the commercial there's people coming in to the room saying, all right, he's not, he's definitely not going to win. He's not good. He needs to go. He needs to, you know, we'll put him to the side. We'll do something else. And the one producer that, uh, who gave me the countdown of five, four, three, two, one, and she was look at doing like the, the switch, switchboard. She said, she pulled me to the side and she said, you don't let anyone tell you to leave this room. And so you're ready to leave this room. And you were here for a reason. You messed up in the beginning. We're gonna go to commercial, win the commercial, and you need to finish strong. And again, if it wasn't for her, I don't know where I would have been in that moment. So I took a minute to myself, get yourself together. You know why you're here. You know why you wrote down that vision and that goal on that piece of paper, and you need to finish strong. And when we went, we went back to commercial, and I did just that and I finished. Did I win the contest? No, I didn't. Did it matter? No, it didn't. The point was that I wrote down a piece of paper that I was something that I wanted to do. I followed through. I didn't have a good start, but I had a good finish. And that's all that mattered to me. And when I got home, I had some friends who said I did good, some family members who said that I did poorly. However, whether it was good or bad it didn't matter the fact that I was there. And I was able to go home and cross that off the list and move on to the next thing. All right, so once, which was become, business, I put down, I want to be a business owner. So as the story progresses, I'm writing my children's books and you know, conventional wisdom is that, you know, you traditionally, you write a children's book or any type of book, you try to get uh, 
representation, have a publisher or an agent represent your work. And I went that route uh, for the first year, uh, sending my work in to, to different agencies, and I got turned down by all of them. Every single one of them uh, will think your stuff is nice, however, we're not hearing back from them at all. And for me, I never would let any one person or organization give me the yes or no on something that I want to do. Right, so I just like I, I I hear you. However, I want to do it anyway, and that's when I ended up creating my uh, my first business, uh, an LLC, LLC, and started my own publishing company. And I just found that I figured it out my own way on how to self-publish my books independently, instead of relying on someone to tell me what's good or not. Like, let me do it, and let me and let the audience with the kids, families, children determine whether it's good or not. And so I got the cross, so I crossed that off the list because as a business owner, because I was getting turned down by all of these publishers. So that was another thing that was on, the, on my list and I was able to cross it off the list. Um, and then year after year, um, we just kept publishing books, right? So now, 10 years later, we're 15 children's books in. I never needed a publisher. I was able to take my, my story and my books all over the world, um, all from the simple, uh, simple idea that I could, I could do it. And I didn't need anyone else to determine whether I was good enough or not, because I felt that I was good enough for, uh, you know, for, my, for my story and my books and my characters, um, and I was good enough. And you know, so I got to cross it off the list. Another thing that was on that list um, was be a nonprofit leader. You know, reading up on Barack Obama and his story of being a community organizer really said to me that, you know, being just a good, kind-hearted person can take you, take you anywhere, you know, in, in a, especially in a career related towards helping other people. And, you know, I, I, once, once I read up on, uh, his, his community organizing background and one of his uh, biographies, autobiographies, I, I immediately went to um, our local local commissioner and I just asked through, through email, how can I get involved? How can I get involved? How can I help out in any, in any way? And the commissioner at the time uh, directed me to uh, an organization called the Armour Progressive Civic Association. and. I ended up going to the meetings, and it's just a local organi small organization that uh, talks about local issues that's going on in the, in the community, and giving uh, you know we can get input, output, um, and just hear from different you know, developers that are going on in the area. Um, any, anything that's going on community-wise is, is going on in, within an organization, and I ended up becoming the vice president at 21. And then the following year, uh, president. And I'm thinking to myself, what? what? <laughs> I remember at one meeting, just randomly thinking to myself, what am I doing here? I'm the youngest one here. Everyone else is like nine, like three times my age. But it's because I was so interested in this work that it didn't matter, you know, my age. I just enjoyed being a part of community. And uh, on top of that, you know, I started or organizing book drives, food drives, sock drives, um, you know, things for Thanksgiving, for, for Christmas, uh, you know, year after year. And after a while, I said to myself, I don't, I think we're, we're, we're going to have to start a nonprofit organization. And, got, and all of a sudden, you're crossing that off the list because, um, you know, uh, it took a couple years. We ended up filing for a 501c3 to become a uh, tax exempt nonprofit organization um, due to all the community work that, we were, that I was doing in the community over the last couple of years. And, you know, helping uh, at this point over 100,000 families, whether it's again through food insecurity, uh, you know, our literacy initiatives. You know, socks, toys, a whole bunch of different different initiatives, and uh, it, it just warms my heart that we're able to help so many people. 
but it all started from from writing that on a piece of paper that I want to be a nonprofit leader. When I didn't really know what that was, I think that's something that I seen in Barack Obama's book that you know um, that's something that could interest me in the future. And then here we are, ten years later, helping so many people, so many families across so many areas, um, based off of you know the book that I read. Um, so that's something again, cross it off the list. Nonprofit leader uh, said I want to be a radio host. Cross that off the list. Business owner, cross it off the list. Um, another thing that was on that list I didn't want to mention was to be a TV host. And you know, when it, when it came specific to that goal, same thing with, t with, with radio. I don't know how I'm going to get on television, right? But I just know it was something that I wrote down. And lo and behold, I was, I was in my driveway one morning and I, someone mentioned to me that I was mentioned in a newspaper, the local paper. So I went to uh, go get the paper, came back and I was in my driveway and I'm reading through it and I see a ad that a local uh, station is looking for community hosts for, on, for different television programming. And I'm like, how is that, how is that possible? <laughs> well, how is that possible uh, that I'm reading this on a random ad in this newspaper um, when I said that I wanted to be a radio TV host, uh, you know, that I wrote down year, years past. So I want something that I was looking for, something that found me, and then I immediately called the, uh, the number on there and I had a meeting with the individual in, uh, at the station and I pitched a show to them, which was called On The Rise, which was a community-based uh, television program that uh, hosted local business leaders and entrepreneurs about their, their, their rise to uh, you know, their particular profession and things that they were doing in the, in the community and in their business. And it went very well. We went, we went from having just one host. I remember when I put the ad out, to um, probably about 10 a day that you know from uh, that wanted to come on the show and, and be a part of the program and then years later almost the same thing we had a television program called uh, really exciting and delightful stories which was a play off of uh, reading rainbow which I grew up on and thoroughly enjoyed when I was younger and that uh, program pretty much was a highlighted local, young and local uh, authors, um, you know, with creative writing uh, and creative writing and they would, they were able to create their own stories and their own storybooks and then through, through a contest and then we would come, they would come on the show and share their story and share their book with me on screen as I shared my book uh, and my story with them as well and that went very well and again I was able to cross that off the list as being a, a television host being a um, entrepreneur, being a nonprofit leader, you know, saying that I got to be on radio, all these things just because I wrote them down on a piece of paper and strictly focused on the things that I wanted. And I, and I remember my mom saying at the time, if you focus on these things, watch how your life is gonna change because ultimately it has to <laughs> because you're just, you're, because you're, you're focused on these things and they can only benefit you, it can't be a detriment. So, um, you see, but you see the power of, of perseverance, you see the power of faith, you see the power of your mind, that anything that you write down on a piece of paper can come into reality. Um, even years later, uh, oh, and also, just to share, I also said that I wanted to uh, run for office. That's something I did not mention in the, in the uh, in the uh, in the beginning, on that I wrote down the left road, I said I wanted to also run for office because Barack Obama obviously ran for office. So, same thing. I in two thousand in two thousand twelve, I ended up running uh, for uh, state representative. I went to my community uh, and got to tried to get enough signatures to get on the ballot, and I just missed it by just a few signatures to get on the ballot for that spring. Um, which again, didn't matter to me as long as I just put my foot forward and tried it. 
and people start to really at that point notice uh, the things that I was doing in the community because it's like who is this 22, 23 year old kid doing all these th th different things? Um, he's trying to write books, he's trying to do community work, he's trying to run for office, like who is he? And I'm just like I'm just, I'm just me, I'm just someone who wrote these things down and I'm just going to focus on those things alone. And. Um, and you see here, you know, like 10, you know, almost almost 10 years later from that first list. Um, again, we're 15 books in. We have a non uh, uh, nonprofit organization, not just one business, uh, but I've started multiple businesses. I mean, we're here in a studio uh, that I uh, have ownership in called Daydream Creative Studios, um, where we not only host different entrepreneurs and businesses for workshops, classes, presentations. Uh, photography, video, uh, private private art studio, a whole range of different things um, that we do in this uh, in the studio here, um, which which it, which was a uh, a vision that came to me during the lockdowns in the first lockdown during the pandemic. I said, when, when, what, what's going to happen once we get out of this? You know, um, I know there's a lot of small businesses and creatives that can just share space to. Uh, fulfill their dreams and their purpose here in, in local and in the community and it took a year later and then here we are with a space that hopefully does that for a lot of people um, and then even right before that we had a vision for um, a clothing boutique that was called Epiphany, Epiphany Designs which is right down the street from here in the studio that we're in here today um, same thing I had the, the vision during the lockdown um, you know, I started uh, a clothing line and a fragrance line, and and I said, you know what? When we get out of when we when we get out of this uh, the early part of this pandemic, I'm gonna open up a store. And then we ended up. I wrote it down on a piece of paper. Next thing you know, six months later, I have my first retail store uh, called Epiphany Designs in Bryn Mawr uh, for uh, for the first year, and then when we opened this studio right afterwards. So. I, I just share that no matter what you want to do, it's possible. Uh, no one person can tell you yes or no. Um, I am the I am, and I believe everyone else is the CEO of their life um, through perseverance, faith, determination, uh, hope, whatever positive word that you can possibly you can con you can conjure up. Um, it, it is possible and. Um, I always like to thank, first and foremost, my, my parents for their inspiration and their encouragement that no matter what I wanted to do, that it was possible. And also, obviously, always give a thank you to uh, Barack Obama for just being him uh, and knowing that, you know, through his, his, his life and his work, he inspired someone uh, from Loa Marion, from Ardmore. To fulfill every dream that he possibly can and knowing that through my work hopefully I'm doing the same for someone or a group of kids uh, who don't think that they can do it but they share see my story see my work and they're able to be inspired to do the same